Welcome back to my channel, Dave Law from Get Some Colour In Your Life. Um, today's video is more of a bonus video. Usually I try to put videos once a week, usually on a Monday. Uh, but this week I am um, off work. It's the school holidays, so um, I have the chance to make a little bit of extra content here. So this one is going to be, um, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the materials that I use um, so I'm going to be looking at paper, brushes, watercolours and maybe some other bits and pieces. Well, if you watch to the end, you might find a few useful tips. So that said, let's get straight into the video. I didn't realise how much of a hoarder, hoarder I really am. But this is my uh, selection of palettes. Not all of which I use. You can see the top one full of dust. And this is one that I actually put together myself. It's uh, Jackson's Paints. Uh, same as the second one. And then I've got my Schminke Horridam Rembrandt uh, watercolour paints. My Winsor & Newton palette. And this is actually a mid jello case. But I've got my M. Graham's uh, brand in there. Which I haven't really used yet. And then uh, White Knights at the bottom. So I did talk about um, professional grade and um, student grade. These are the uh, Cotman brand, which I started off using many years ago, which are really, really quite nice to use and nothing wrong with that. Um, although I would suggest if you're uh, starting out uh, looking into the White Knights uh, paints, for professional grade paints, they're uh, they're near enough the same price as student grade, especially well here in the UK they are anyway. And in these uh, containers, I have um, loose um, paints. You can see I've got some Jackson's colours. These are my M Graham uh, sets that I bought. They're really quite nice because I got um, these two sets. One's Cityscape colour set, which you get. Um, you can see it's got five colours in there. Five useful colours for townscapes and cityscapes. And then I got this um, this set here. You can see the colours you get in this one. And then in this container here, I do have uh, mostly my Windsor & Newton uh, colours. These are quite quite nice. Um, obviously professional grades. So these are really nice quality and they're quite easy to get hold of in this country, in the UK. So these are uh, my, my go-to. I do like using these. For my brushes, this is what I like to use. It's something that I picked up from Jackson's Supplies. And you can see this is where I keep my brushes nice and um, just nice and taken, taken care of. I do have, actually have these brushes, but they're uh, always out. You can see um, I've got the, uh, the Haig brushes. Now you can get a couple of, you can get the one inch, which this one. So it's got a nice... So size to that, and then this one, I think, is it must be a sort of two inch. I'd say two inch brush, and they're really quite nice for uh, landscape painting, for big sky washes, things like that. And then the opposite end, we've got uh, a liner brush, which is quite nice to use for foliage. Uh, branches, things like that. I've got a Da Vinci. Oh, can you see that? Da Vinci size five, and this is this is actually. Uh, I think this is a, a synthetic and natural hair brush. And I have my squirrel, squirrel mop brushes, 
which are really quite nice to use, especially on big sky washes. And you can see this is a pure squirrel mop. They hold plenty of water, they're nice soft brushes, and uh, you can get some nice um, paints done with those. Again, another squirrel mop. And this is a nice obey, size two stroke zero. And this again, you can get a nice um, point on that. It holds plenty of water. And that's what I like to do for my landscape paintings. I do have other brushes. Um, I've not really used that much, um, but I do have a fan brush, which you can see. I've not really used that, so I couldn't really say. Um, most of my brushes are rounds, but I do have um, this sort of flat, flat brush. And then there's a travel brush here. And then uh, I have used this one a couple of times, this bamboo. Um, I like using ink, painting with ink with this one. You've got two sides, so you can uh, draw with it with ink, dip the uh, end in, uh, pe in ink, and then draw with that. And these are some of my pens, which I like to use, the Faber-Castell um, drawing pens. You can see different styles, different nibs. Um, and then I've just got a pencil case with all my extra bits and pens, pencils for that. Okay, let's have a look at some um, hot press paper. Now this for me is probably my least favourite of all the watercolour paper. You can see it's uh, Bockingford and if you have to try in a new um, surface of paper then I would recommend getting one of these uh, pads. There's no commitment in a uh, big sort of pack or you're not left with uh, hundreds of sheets there's 12 sheets in this pad and you can see just one of the paintings that i did i actually did this for a youtube video uh, not so long since and i find this paper quite nice for more of an illustration type painting you can see the uh, the color sort of uh, sits on the paper it's um, just got a, a different unique sort of look and that's why um, I think botanical painters go for that. Now, in contrast, this one is uh, medium, sort of cold press paper. And you can see the uh, texture on the buildings. Uh, it, it offers a nice uh, texture with a dry brush. And this one, again, um, I, I just love the way um, your colours sort of granulate with the texture on the paper and the look that you can get. If you look at the sky, um, you can see the other things that happen uh, with this um, medium sort of grain paper. And this actually, this this paper is Indian Indian paper. It's, uh, it's actually 200 pounds, so it's quite heavier than my 140 pound paper. It's quite thicker, so it doesn't buckle as much, but I love the way the colors sort of merge and uh, create this uh, really nice uh, you can create really nice skies with a blending wet and wet with these uh, paper this is just another pack that I got this is actually Jackson's and this is an A4 size I'm not really mad on the size of A4 I do like the 11 by 15 um, you can get your paper cut down by Jackson's free of charge so do sell full um, I think they're imperial you can half them like I do so you get 11 by 15 um, and this um, this is the Fabriano paper which again you can get in packs um, pack of 50 you can see um, pack of 50 which is quite affordable so it's nice uh, quality paper to use if you're practicing or learning how to watercolor I actually forgot that I did some painting on this Indian um, um, 200 pound um, it, it's it's a medium to rough um, grain so there's a bit more texture on there but I, I do really enjoy this paper the real only thing that put me off is um, I can't really tape this paper to the board because uh, it started to rip on the sides because it's deckled edge they call it you can see the uh, the way it's been um, I don't know if it's been cut or the way it's it's decalled on the edges. Anyway, hope you like this video. Hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.